Okay. So this week I decided I was going to do something a little bit different. Usually I put out the astrological forecast um, on Sundays or early Monday, usually very early Monday morning. Um, but this week I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to just um, tell you guys about this week. I wanted to actually use it as a teaching moment. I know a lot of you who have been watching my videos on my website when I post them and the written report, a lot of you guys are wanting me to teach you guys stuff. So this will be a really beautiful introduction into um, what's going on today. Today in the astrological world, it is a really big deal. So if you are not an astrologer or you're just like starting to um, pay attention and study, you might not have heard or really know too much about this event. And this event is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. I have been talking about it for a while now. And kind of all my forecasts have been leading up to this day. And so I really wanted to put this out here today for you guys. Um, a lot of you guys are feeling the energetics of this day and of this um, particular aspect with Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces. And there's a couple of other things that are at play that are pretty monumental. Um, Saturn squaring the nodes is one. And also um, Venus, which is the lower octave of Neptune, is a major power player um, in all of these energies. So I want to jump into this. The Neptune-Jupiter conjunction in Pisces is such a big thing because of these being, number one, they're outer planets, so they have a longer cycle. It takes them a lot longer time to cycle around the world. The last time that this conjunction happened in this sign was in 19, I mean, 1856. And I'm going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about the other conjunctions that have happened um, in prior years of when Neptune and Jupiter conjuncted in Gemini, then whenever it had a conjunction in Virgo, and then one in Sag. And now it's back to uh, the conjunction in Pisces. So let me share my screen and share with you guys today's chart. So at 6.43 a.m. Central Time is when this conjunction happened. And you can see this conjunction is right here. This is Neptune and this is Jupiter and they are happening at 23 degrees Pisces. When this conjunction happens, you can see the archetypes play out. Sometimes it happens on that day. A lot of times it's stuff leading up to it and afterwards, because this is going to be felt for a while because these are such slower moving planets. Um, it takes Jupiter 12 months to go through each sign and Neptune, man, it takes, you know, a hundred and I believe, um, 46 or 64 years to, um, travel around the earth. So we can see that this is really big. A note on the archetypes to kind of help you guys follow along here is Jupiter is really the planet of expansion, of growth. It can be a teacher. It is definitely um, things that can be broadcasted. It's our uh, philosophy, our philosophical, cosmological view that we use to shape um how we relate to the day in and the day out. It can be our truth. It can be our authenticity. Um, it can also be lies because it's the flip side of um, honesty. It can be exaggeration. 
um, because that's a function of expansion. And what else do I want to mention? It is linked with natural law. It's really, it's linked with religion, dogma. So if you have like this really strong belief, this conviction um, that you're shaping your values around, okay? Um, this is all expressions of Jupiter. Neptune is the collective unconscious. It is our immune systems. It is the pineal gland, which expresses melatonin um, because it's what helps us in our dream state. It's also something that helps us also um, spiritualize on a scientific base. It is what we would call the transcendental urge to spiritualize. It is compassion. It is love. It is pure. It is oil. It is water. So these are kind of the pure forms of different things. Um, it can also be because there's a connection and in conjunct that it has. And so this is something that we will feel naturally, even if you don't really know about the in conjuncts, this is something that we can see with this is it is our um, beliefs and our faith wrapped up in our security because there's an in conjunct um, happening. I don't want to get too many things lost in translation, but these are really some of the archetypes and Pisces with this sign, because there's an in conjunct that's happening with cancer, this can be very much um, our security wrapped up in our projections that we put on to other people because of our beliefs and then the illusion of our expectations um, and that being projected onto a partner, what our needs are, or not even to the partner, to a collective, to, uh, to other, okay? And the disillusionment comes from it actually not being true. And so we've all experienced that before where we've had dissonance and we are wrapped up in such a belief structure that we end up not being able to hear the truth or know the truth, even when evidence is presented to us that is going against our beliefs and showing us that that's not the truth. Um, so it's this whole security function. And so we can see this playing out. When we see this conjunction happening, there are things that within history, um, and I'll go into this in a second, in history, we see pop up a lot. So um, we can see a lot of collective um, things happen with this conjunction. We see pandemics, we see floods, we see mass loss of life, we see uh, treaties and wars over land, um, we see religious reformations happen, we see medical advances, we see technological advances, we see migration of people whenever this conjunction happens, even if it's not in Pisces. Um, So I wanted to talk a little bit about what happened the last time that this happened in this conjunction, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction happened in Pisces. In 1856, there was the outbreak of cholera or cholera, and that was something that happened in the water and it created a pandemic and there was mass loss of life there. There was... Um, I know I wrote notes down. Yes, the Crimean War ended because of the um, treaty with Paris. There was the Bessemer mass production of steel that happened in 1856, the last time that this conjuncted in Pisces. And then the next time that there was a Neptune-Jupiter conjunction, it happened in Gemini. And with that, all of these things you can look up um, 
online. So if you want to do your own research, you can look up what happened in 1856. Then the next time that Jupiter and Neptune conjunct, it happened in the sign of Gemini. And when it happened there, it was 1894. And so there was a Hong Kong plague. And then there was the Osage Indian Reserve. There was a huge discovery of oil, which oil is an archetype of Neptune. Um, the rabies vaccination was made. There was also um, the American Catholic Church was formed. So we see these like religious, you know, things happen as well, kind of these dogmas. Um, and then mass production happens with things. And so in that year, that's when Coca-Cola formed. The next time that there was a conjunction was in 1932. And this was in Virgo. And so in 1932, there was the Great Depression. Um, there was the vaccine for penicillin was made. Um, there was the kidnapping of Lindbergh's child. BBC first came on air in Britain. And, oh, and then there was the Gandhi strike, the hunger strike. So then we move and we go to 1971, which was the last time prior to this one that Jupiter and Neptune formed a conjunction and it happened in the sign of Sagittarius. And in that year, there was mass disillusionment because of the papers that were leaked about Vietnam. Um, there was the Apollo mission and the Soviet space station came in. There was um, massive flooding in Bangladesh. There was um, heavy rains in the Himalayas and um, Qatar was free of the British rule. And then there can always be kind of a lot of philanthropic work that goes with the Neptune Jupiter conjunction. And there's also um, this iconic thing that it can represent icons. And so a lot of times we will see deaths with icons. And so back in 1971, this is whenever um, Jim Morrison died and same with Louis Armstrong. So that all happened on the mutable axis as well, which, um, as most of my students know, that has to deal with natural law. So I think that um, it's really interesting now that I've given this information and you guys can go back and do your own research if you want. Um, I love looking at cycles in astrology and this is like such an incredible time to, if you're a student of astrology, to really look at those cycles. I We'll put this up in just a second again, but I wanted to talk to you guys. So the things that we can see happening right now um, at play today and the weeks leading up to today and the weeks leading after it, it's pretty incredible. These archetypes are majorly at play here. So it makes you wonder and I think that we should all ask ourselves and kind of, I have a friend, her name's Faye. She always has this expression. I love it. It's like to put something in your pipe and smoke it. So I want you guys to take this and put it in your pipe and smoke it. Um, look back at history and look at how this is playing out. And then I want you to think of what is going on. So we kind of have these overlapping, repeating themes as well. The things that come to mind that really are representing um, this Neptune can um, Neptune Jupiter conjunction right now is last night I saw um, John Lennon's son. He uh, he sang Imagine and he had sworn he was not going to say, sing that um, because he didn't feel like it was appropriate because of how his dad made this song. And it was for the Vietnam War era, which if you think about um, what I just said and when there was the Neptune-Jupiter conjunction 
the last time the Vietnam War era was going on. And so we see this overlapping theme. I also talked a little bit about floods. There's flooding going on right now in South Africa. Um, there is, there were some other things I wanna talk about. As of today, Gilbert Gottfried, he passed away. So that's an iconic death I feel like here. Um, we have the pandemic still going on, which started back in 2020 with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. And it's still continuing on. And I want people to bear this in mind because Neptune is, it represents our immune system and Jupiter represents expansion. And if we know that when these two things come to, together that there are plagues that end up happening. And so since we're still in the middle of a pandemic, um, I want us to all just kind of don't freak out, but to be, um, you know, to be cognizant of this, we can see how quickly leading up to this conjunction that a vaccine was made for it. So that's another overlapping theme. A lot of times there's this dissonance that will happen. And I see it, especially right now with the Saturn and Aquarius squaring the nodes, the transiting nodes that are happening. Aquarius is an archetype of dissonance. Saturn is that of, uh, of the consensus. So the society in which that we find ourselves in. Aquarius is also the function of liberation and individuation. And so it's also the collective conscious instead of the collective unconscious being Neptune, it's the collective conscious and it is definitely signaling for us to wake up. How are we going to change the collective conscious at right, like right now? There's this huge call to action. And whenever Pisces or Virgos at play, a lot of times there's this disillusionment that can happen because we've bought into these deep beliefs or we can see that with Putin right now. He feels like his belief is the only belief and the right belief. And so we see this other archetype of the migration, the mass migration of the Ukrainians fleeing because of what has been going on in Russia. We also um, can see how people can become really dogmatic in their beliefs and thinking that there's only one belief, one truth with this energy. Today here in Oklahoma, where I am at, our governor put the, passed a bill, signed a bill um, with the most uh, restrictions on abortion. And so we can see that this is playing out. And this is mass disillusionment as well. It's going up against, you know, um, constitutional rights for women. And it's all set on this person's belief system and his structure of beliefs. So it's all of the same archetypes really playing out. A lot of you guys, if you're thinking on a personal level and not so much as a collective level, with Jupiter and Neptune conjunct, there can be a lot of people who are wanting to expand and transcend and spiritualize. And so a lot of us are having these dreams that are um, definitely about what's going on. It'll be our subconscious from our previous life content. It can be just subconscious content here right now in the present. And it can also be stuff dealing with nature and disaster. A lot of us I've heard from clients are having these dreams. And so it's the Neptune Jupiter conjunction with Neptune. It is our pineal gland, which that is where we have the third eye chakra. And as a way to help open that up to bust through the root um, chakras, if you know anything about that, there's this um, biological drive to spiritualize and to open that up in the pineal gland and the pineal gland to do that, what it does is it releases a lot of melatonin. And so a lot of people energetically are having disrupted sleep cycles and they're having these really interesting dreams. And this all has to do with really even some people who it's kind of a new agey term, aren't awakening or awake or whatever you want to call it. 
they are still feeling the collective energy. It does not matter. With this going on right now, everyone is going to feel it in some type of way. Either it's going to come out as a distorted version of this or it's going to be the more natural. And so I really want all of us to really ask ourselves, like, why did we choose to be here right now? What's my purpose? What am I supposed to be actualizing in this lifetime? Why did I pick to come in at this point in time in history this hasn't happened in this sign since 1856 that's a long time that is telling you it's something really big um and in my opinion with the saturn squaring the nodes that's happening right now and the transiting uranus and um Taurus that the transiting nodes are gonna the north node is gonna come up to it and so we're going to feel this this is really asking for us to change the collective conscious what are we going to do how are we going to do it and this is very much individuating and we're seeing a lot of the disillusion that come up because unfortunately out of um evolutionary necessity when we resist, things come in and disillusionment happens. And it is to force the energy back in, whether it be on a collective or a personal level, to ask why. Why is this happening? What does this mean? What am I doing? What do I need to fix? What do I need to figure out? It's really to get to the bottom of it because the only way to change the collective is to start with ourselves. And so if any of you guys are experiencing disillusionment, I want you guys to really look at it as a teacher. If you're sick, all of a sudden you're battling something that has to do with your immune. Um, if you are having a crisis in consciousness or in your beliefs, look at all of these things as a teacher. What is the teaching that is being presented to me? What is the truth of this situation, what is wanting to be revealed? What is unfolding? What does this mean? And just know that it's not a toxic positivity. Everything happens for a reason. It's more of why am I calling this in? What am I needing to look at that I might have been resisting beforehand that I need to look at now? This is a time when a lot of people do check out because there can be this disillusionment in their beliefs. And so I know that I've seen multiple suicides um, recently, and I've had a lot of clients come to me who uh, work with others or counsel them or do energy work who have been coming to me and being like, what is up with people and having these suicidal um, thoughts and these things that they're going through. And it's definitely this conjunction because there is this loss of belief or realizing that you've been disillusioned and really bought into the truth of something that's not. And so instead of getting caught up in the negative of it, I want you to do the Jupiterian thing and really look at what is this teaching? What what is this revealing to me that I haven't been able to understand before and know that it's a higher calling and it's not because we're supposed to suffer or we're supposed to hurt or for anything to get better we have to suffer first those are very distorted versions of this energy we are not victims and you know there are things, and I'm not talking about like the Ukrainian people or anything like that. That is massive disillusionment. And the Russian people are having mass disillusionment with their leader. I'm talking about more on a personal level. Um, I've had a lot of clients who um, are having issues in their partnerships right now. And what I've seen across the board is the archetypes of this playing out it's the having an expectation because there's some belief that we've bought into or someone's bought into about this is how this is supposed to look and this is how i'm defining this so this is how i believe it's supposed to go and it's really an illusion and it's a conditioned thing and so not really being in touch with one's own needs really are 
Um, and so not listening to oneself about the truth that is being revealed about whatever's happening, whether it be with a family member or a romantic partnership and really having rose tinted glasses on because they want to buy into the idealism of what it is and not really acknowledge what's happening. And that's where that square, that Saturn square comes in that a lot of people are feeling with this. There's this dissonance and the disillusionment happens because there's so much resistance to really listening to oneself. And so I just want to say, not for everyone, but if this is resonating with you, I want you to do the Uranian thing in Taurus. I want you to ask yourself to see why, what have I not been seeing before? Where have I not been thinking for myself? Where have I bought into the illusion of something that's a definition? that really isn't working for me anymore. And this will all wrap around your values and having your needs being met or not being met. And some of us have dissonance with our needs. We think that we're defining them in this way and we're asking for what we need. And then we realize we get it. And it's like, no, that's not what I really needed. Well, the reason is that is really kind of a clue into hey, this is some kind of condition definition that I have going here. It's really not what my natural needs are. And to jump into this just a little bit deeper, and hopefully I'm keeping you guys with me. I, because I study evolutionary astrology, I don't just look at the moon, south and north nodes or the transiting ones or the ones in people's charts. I also look at the planetary nodes and asteroid nodes. And so it's another deeper layer. And so Venus is the lower octave of Neptune. So we can tell that Venus is kind of a power player here. Venus is also the ruler of the transiting Uranus and Taurus because she co-rules Taurus. Right now, Venus entered into Pisces. Venus is really about our values and our internalized relationship with self and knowing what our values are and knowing what our needs are and how to meet our own needs. Therefore, if we are able to meet our own needs, we are able to ask for what we need. So this is something that everyone is figuring out on some type of level right now. And it's really liberating us from past needs that we've outgrown that are outmoded and outdated maybe in ones that have been conditioned to us maybe in ones we've had illusions over that really aren't the ones that we need and this goes even deeper because the transiting venus in pisces is at seven degrees and it is conjunct the south node of venus right now and the north node of Venus is conjunct the transiting Uranus that's happening. And so this is such a call to action to really understand that whatever is happening in your life, the teaching is going to be wrapped up in some type of lesson around discerning what your actual values are that are pertinent to you and your relationship with yourself. That is why I have been talking about wanting everyone to be really objective and um, really looking at their relationship with themselves, not with other people, not other people's relationships, but how am I in relationship to myself? Because when you do that, that creates so much more objectivity because it's internalized. It's using the Taurian side of that Venus, the inner expression, the energy moving in instead of the external side. And it's to help us liberate from outmoded ways. And then we can see in the collective how this energy is really playing out right now. 
we have in Oklahoma that just signed this bill and there's so many women and other people in the nation saying that this is wrong. You're not listening to our needs because people have been getting in touch with their needs and they're knowing that this is wrong and it's wrapped up in his belief and the dissonance that he has with it, right? So it's all of this conglomerate of transiting planets happening. This is what's happening in Oklahoma right now. We can see it happening with Ukraine and Russia with Putin, kind of these same energetics. And it's all centered around these dogmas of these cosmological philosophical views that they have bought into that are now becoming their values, but they're not listening to the people whom they're serving. So there's um, mass disillusionment that's happening within society and it's to change the collective. We can see this playing out. Uh, so the flooding that's happening in South Africa, there's also stuff going on with their power grid, okay? And this is the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. It's the energetics of technological things. Uh, if there's advances, there's things that can go awry as well. And so it's the country and the leaders of that country who didn't really listen and put their money um, somewhere else that didn't really help the society. And so now they're having, you know, these issues with flooding right now as we speak and with their power grid. We can see um, how there is this outcry from the public in every way that we turn with these kind of crisis things going on, which Pisces is, can be crisis. Pisces and Virgo are on that same axis, so it can be this crisis. And so it's really to get the collective to change the consciousness, the direction and the collective values. And so I just want you guys to all be cognizant of this. And I want you guys to really continue to be objective. You've got the objectivity that is stressed with the transiting Saturn and Aquarius squaring the nodes, and you've got the objectivity that is stressed with the transiting Uranus and Taurus. And so this is really about shedding anything that's outmoded and outdated. I think that we will see um, more advances in technology. We see Elon Musk just like bought, uh, cause there's this whole mass broadcasting thing that goes with a Neptune Jupiter conjunction. So we see Elon Musk just bought part of Twitter is on the board of it. We see um, just, I want you guys who are wanting to learn more than anything to really like sink into these, let these kind of archetypes osmos into you. That way you can be objective like with yourself and with what's happening with the collective and see how these archetypes are really coming to the surface. And know that you have chosen to be here at this moment for a reason. And there is a call to action for all of us to look at our internal structured relationship with self and what our values are and to not be disillusioned. And so that takes a conscious effort to want to recognize the truth of something. And there can be a sense of confusion whenever you're seeking the truth at first, especially when you don't realize that you have bought into an illusion as truth. And it's not just one of us or it's all of us who do this. And the point right now is to get us to evolve. And it's so that we can evolve on a personal level. That way we can evolve the, on a collective level. And that is why we have chosen to be here right now is to help the collective grow and to get back in alignment and in balance 
and as equals and to have inclusivity, which is a function of Aquarius, and to really step out of dogma. And I just, I'm so passionate about this. I hope I need to stop. I talk to you guys like my best friends um, on here. I think it's hilarious, but I, I just, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope that it helps you have some clarity about like why the energy might feel really potent right now for you. If you know your chart or you look at it at all, I want you to see where this, I want you to look at three different things. I want you one to see where um, Uranus is transiting in your chart because this is going to show you where you're going to need to have some rebellion against um, or thinking for oneself against, you know, some crystallized structures. I want you to see where Saturn is in your chart because this is going to help you bust through, see where you need to bust through some of these crystallized structures within your consciousness that you need to liberate from to shed from any type of conditioning that maybe you didn't realize was there before. And then I want you to look at where Neptune and Jupiter is and falls in your chart and it's in the sign of Pisces. And this is going to show you one, the neat, like where you're wanting to spiritualize. Um, and it's also going to point to if you have been disillusioned or you are having um, some lessons in discerning what the truth is and um, what you should believe in and what you shouldn't believe in. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot here. And if you guys have questions, you can always message me. I don't mind. Um, I also ask, like, share this if you feel like other people should listen to this. I'm not going to really write a report this week. I just wanted to talk about this because this is such a big event. And I hope that um, you guys were able to follow. I can do the Sag thing and just go on and on and on. So I'm going to stop here. But yeah, if you have questions, message me. You can always book with me. I have my website. You can always message me and book that way. Or if you just have a quick question, um, I don't mind answering them most of the time. If I don't have the time, I'm sorry. But if I do, I certainly will. Um, I love nerding out with you guys. And I hope that you got something out of this. And just continue, please, to be an observer in your own life and to observe yourself in relationship with self. It really is like the key for us to, it's the first steps into making a conscious effort to really spiritualize. And I don't think that it is said enough that that is the best way to start in the very, 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 very beginning. Um, and I just want you guys to know that like, there can be a lot of emotional content coming up right now. There is a lot of heavy water energy. So it's really wanting us to evolve because we don't evolve through the mental, we evolve through the emotional body. And so right now, if you feel like you're going through stuff, I just want you to feel whatever it is that you need to feel and continue to observe yourself. And I hope you guys have a great week on Sunday. I will go back to the video and the written, but I want everyone to take care of themselves and to enjoy the magic as it unfolds and to laugh at the absurdity of how these archetypes will play out in all of our lives in some type of way right now and just hang in there and I love you guys and I hope that you guys have a good week until later.